Wrapping back markers, there they're coming up to pass the Mazda. In 1991, the landscape of the World Sports Car Championship was dramatically altered when the FIA imposed new regulations mandating that all cars must use a naturally aspirated 3.5-liter engine. For Toyota, this meant the end of their successful CV series of sports cars, which had relied on the turbocharged R36V, a 3.6-liter V8 engine. Faced with this challenge, Toyota's engineers set to work on creating a new machine that would comply with the new regulations. They called it the TS-010. The heart of the TS-010 was the new RV-10. A V-10 engine, a 3.5-liter powerhouse capable of producing 650 horsepower for endurance races with a maximum output of 700 horsepower. However, building a new engine was just the start. To handle the V-10's immense power, Toyota needed a brand new chassis. They turned to renowned designer Tony Southgate, who crafted a sleek and aerodynamic carbon fiber chassis. The car was designed with advanced features, including adjustable wings, diffusers, and extensive wind tunnel testing to ensure superior downforce and minimal drag. Toyota's first test of the TS-010 came at the final round of the 1991 WSC season in Autopolis, Japan. Despite the car's debut status, it finished sixth overall only three laps behind the winning Mercedes-Benz. This initial performance hinted at the TS-010's potential and marked the beginning of Toyota's pursuit of victory in the WSC. 1992 began with high hopes for Toyota. The team entered the World Sports Car Championship with their main competitor being the Peugeot 905. At the season opener in Monza, Toyota's first major breakthrough came. Jeff Lees and Hitoshi Ogawa, driving chassis number two, secured Toyota's first victory after a leading Peugeot crashed out. Now right at the back of the field, problem for Dalmas. Dalmas in the lead. Oh, Dalmas with terrible problems. The car on its roof and the crews and marshals on their way. And this is a serious situation with the possibility of fuel leaking, fire starting. Urgent action required, down in the pits, the news coming over the crackly radio to them. Dalmas is helped out, obviously shaken, but unhurt. As the season progressed, Toyota faced a series of setbacks, often falling behind Peugeot in both pace and reliability. At the 24 Hours of Le Mans, Toyota fielded three of their cars, including new chassis number five and number six. Despite two of the cars finishing, Toyota's best result was a second-place finish, six laps behind the victorious Peugeot. While Toyota showed incredible speed and resilience, they were consistently outpaced by their French rivals. The rest of the season continued in a similar vein, with Toyota regularly finishing behind Peugeot in the WSC races. The team's second-place finish in the team's championship was a testament to the car's performance, but it also underscored how much more was needed to secure the ultimate victory. In Japan, Toyota's TS-010 competed in the All Japan Sports Prototype Championship, the car demonstrated its dominance, taking victories at Fuji Speedway and Suzuka, ultimately securing the manufacturer's championship in the JSPC. These wins proved the TS-010's versatility and reliability, but the dream of world championship glory was still just out of reach. But while the TS-010 showcased engineering brilliance, it also introduced a new challenge for its drivers bone-crushing G-forces. The car's intense aerodynamic grip 
and high-speed cornering ability subjected drivers to extreme physical forces, especially at high-speed tracks like Eastern Creek in Australia. During a crucial nine-day test session in February 1992, Toyota drivers Andy Wallace and Hitoshi Ogawa both suffered a serious injury from these forces. Broken ribs. Eastern Creek's Turn 1 was a high-speed left-hand corner that drivers could take flat out at speeds over 190 miles per hour. However, there was a catch, an aggressive bump halfway through the corner. This bump caused the car to lose and then regain grip in a dramatic, rapid motion, leading to the violent shifts in G-forces that caused Wallace and Ogawa to fracture their ribs. Wallace recalled the painful experience. I went through the corner and just felt this massive crack, and two ribs were broken instantly from just driving the car. Ogawa, driving immediately after Wallace, suffered the exact same fate, breaking two ribs at the same spot in the corner. This phenomenon, often referred to as bone fatigue, occurs when repeated exposure to extreme physical stress causes microfractures in bones. In the case of the TS-010, the combination of the car's immense downforce, the violent G-forces generated during cornering, and the sharp jolts from the bump at turn one led to the injury. Despite the pain, both Wallace and Ogawa continued to push through the tests, driven by the team's desire to perfect the car. Wallace in particular did not want to quit after suffering the injury. He continued driving, only admitting defeat when the pain became unbearable. With the cancellation of both the World Sports Car Championship and the All Japan Sports Prototype Championship in 1993, Toyota's focus shifted to one final race, the 24 Hours of Le Mans. The TS-010 was prepped for what would be its last competitive outing. This race would be Toyota's last chance to claim victory. Despite a valiant effort, Toyota's hopes were dashed once again. Eddie Irvine, Masanori Sekiya, and Toshio Suzuki brought one of the TS-010s home in fourth place. But bad luck struck the other two cars, which failed to finish. The TS-010's Le Mans story ended in heartbreak, with the car once again falling short of victory. It was a bittersweet moment. With no other races on the horizon, the TS-010 was retired from active competition. Toyota shifted its focus to the upcoming era of GT racing, marking the end of the Group C era. However, the TS-010's legacy lived on. It had shown Toyota's commitment to innovation and excellence, and its engineering feats laid the foundation for the company's future motorsport endeavors. The car had been a triumph of engineering, a machine capable of matching the best of the best, but it was also a car that tested its drivers to the limits. The nickname Bone Crusher, given by driver Andy Wallace, reflected the punishing forces the car subjected its pilots to, with Wallace himself suffering cracked ribs from the car's immense downforce. Despite the pain, Wallace and his teammates spoke fondly of the TS-010, praising its unmatched grip and precision. Wallace himself would later reflect, that Toyota still to this day is one of the best race cars I ever drove. While the TS-010's time in the spotlight was brief, its impact was lasting.